Welcome back, Santa Clarita Valley. We're here on your City of Santa Clarita Spotlight Show, where the third Friday of every month we talk about all things related to uh, Santa Clarita. Uh, in the studio with me are Donna and Phil from the Arts Office, Arts and Events Office at uh, the City of Santa Clarita. And they work in City Hall, bringing us some of the pieces that we've seen. We were just talking about one of them, which is coming into the uh, McBean Transit Center, the Archways Project by uh, artist Mark Greaves. And there's a really cool Google photo uh, available. It gives kind of a 3D view. We'll put that up on uh, hometownstation.com. And you were telling me he was uh, he's an artist that's been involved in, in some maybe <laughs> non-traditional. Yeah, well, he uh, does he does work in metal, and um, he's done some uh, uh, other public art pieces, particularly in the north uh, northern California. But um, one of his big claims of fame is he'll go out to Burning Man and, and do these giant, humongous metal sculptures with part of a team. So. Um, I, I've never personally been to Burning Man, but I've seen <laughs> some of his work, and it, it, it's pretty amazing stuff. I, I will say that the, the Archways piece that we have is, is uh, much more um, mellow. That's not the right word. <laughs> um, it's not quite as out there as the Burning Man stuff, obviously. Okay. Um, but it, it's a very interesting piece that was inspired by transportation, and so this it has these um, circular images. So when you see it, you'll kind of get it, but... It it, it, it's all about motion and movement because of the circular forms that he's utilizing. So uh, for me, it's a really exciting piece. And partially, it's the, the newest piece, so that's always exciting to, sure. to see what people react to the newest piece. I, I believe it fits in really well with the, the kind of contemporary look of the, the transfer station. So um, we're excited. And, and like I say, that I, I don't remember the exact date, but the dedication ribbon cutting for the entire project is, I believe, next week. Um, and so the public will be able to access it starting at the end of next week. Interesting. And you bring up a couple of uh, interesting points and, and questions come to mind when you say, um, you know, the kind of themes of motion. I was always wondering, uh, you know, because I cover a lot of the meetings and, and I see what's going on at City Hall, when there's an idea for a new project, hey, we'd like a centerpiece for this project. Uh, how is that process guided as far as when you're sending out the RFQ? Are the artists given, like, we'd we'd like to present this kind of a theme or this is the project, so if we'd like to do that or do you leave it totally open-ended? What kind of guidance is there? Well, when we form the ad hoc committees that work on that project, they sit down and talk about um, potential themes. And usually it's driven by kind of the site um, and sometimes a little beyond just the, the site where it's specifically going, maybe the part of the community, but usually it's pretty site-specific. I was just going to say, there's um, if you look at Saugus, it kind of has a different dynamic than even Valencia, which is right next door, uh, as opposed to Canyon Country, and then you have Newhall. I mean, so is that taken into consideration? Or? To, to some degree, but then also the specific site. Um, you know, a project that's going in front of a library makes sense to have something associated with the library, even though it's in Valencia. But uh, that a project that's maybe going in front of the Newhall Library would have a different theme because it's part of Newhall. So it would still be maybe library centric, but we'd be looking for something that ties into the, the historic nature of, of Newhall. So sure. it, it right now, that's how it's done. Part of the discussion on Tuesday night by the council was a discussion about overriding themes, and, and, and that gets really interesting um, right. because it, that gets to what is the identity of Santa Clarita. And if you ask 10 people, you would probably get 10 different answers. That's what I was going to say. An interesting <laughs> conundrum. It <laughs> must be a, a real challenge because you have so many different sectors of, of just different cultures I in America, in California, but particularly also in the Santa Clarita Valley. You know, that was one of the things that came through is you have this cowboy culture. You have this Native American uh, tradition. You have uh, you know people coming in and wanting to represent the new California and the changes that have come as a result of the melding of these cultures. So uh, I want to kind of put you guys on the spot for a <laughs> second, but just you know, kind of as your own personal – opinions, where do you see um, as the themes and, and some of the thematic uh, development of Santa Clarita as opposed, in, in, in respect to the arts, where do you see that as, um, you know, some of the tradition that's been reflected in the art? And, and if there were a cohesive theme, where would you like to, what elements would you like to see in that? Well, I, I personally believe that it would be very difficult to have a theme mm -hmm. for our community because, first of all, when we were formed almost 26 years ago, we weren't a community, we were four separate communities. A patchwork, and I, if you will. Right, and I kind of equate it to, to New York. Obviously, we're not New York, but the boroughs in New York have their own identities, and we want to, I think, on some level, maintain that and be respectful of the fact that this history in New Hall and Canyon Country and Saugus and Valencia and each of those histories is different. So I if I were putting me on the spot, I would want to look at a, a, a selection of themes, kind of like... Um, when they did this specific plan in Old Town Newhall, they didn't say everything has to look Western or everything has to look Victorian. 
they kind of gave a palette of here's some options. Um, so I, I would personally like to see that there's kind of a palette for the community understanding that like Newhall probably should have more of a historic nature because of its Western history and, and other history and that Canyon Country is very much about the environment to me um, because you have those those hills and it's, it's kind of more uh, natural landscape is, is kind of different than the rest of the valley and sure. Valencia has that very modern isn't quite the right word but contemporary kind of feel to it and Saugus where I live is an interesting one because it's it's kind of the hardest to identify I think in some ways mm, but that's kind of so. the fun of it too um, so it, it would be ideal in my mind if we were to say here's what the future of, of the identity should be is that there's kind of a community by community approach but still enough latitude to respect the, the individual site and what it, it you know, a library is different than, in Valencia is different than the industrial center in Valencia. Right. So some sort of flexibility that way. But, you know, ultimately it's, it's the council's job and, sure. and they're, they're, that's what they do. They've is been to give to do that, right. right, is to be the voice of the people and give direction. Um, obviously, I think they'll want to hear from the community, I would hope. Um, but hopefully we can move forward and find a way that, that, that is create that the art is actually adding to the identity of the community and help people go, oh, yeah, this is who we are as a community. Interesting. And, Donna, you're not getting off the hook, but we have to take a <laughs> quick commercial break. Uh, we'll be back to talk a little bit. I want to get your input on, uh, you know, kind of the richness and, and the, the benefits of the thematic development that they were talking about. Uh, on your hometown station, KHTS AM 1220, we'll be back after this. <laughs> 